What's going on, guys? See, um, a little over a year ago, I did a first impression video on the Konica Hexar RF. And essentially what I did was what I absolutely hate about a lot of other YouTubers when it comes to camera gear. And that is I reviewed a first impression review of this camera and never actually came back to do a further review on my thoughts of the Konica Hexar RF. That falls solely on me. And after like seven or eight comments on my first impression video about other people wanting to know my thoughts, I finally am sitting down and doing another video and updating you with my thoughts, challenges, and things I love and things that I don't love about perhaps my favorite M-mount film camera. Now, you know, I hate excuses, but the main reason why I have not done a follow-up video on the Konica Hexar is because I moved from Virginia to Florida. And in the last year, I was building out this space to record in while really putting my family first over the last year of adjustment to a new city, my kids being in new schools and in new sports teams. And I'm trying to figure out what I wanted this channel to be. And really just starting over in a new region, in a new state, and trying to adjust. However, do not fear my friends, I am back. And my hope is to do a few additional videos on the Konica Hexar so that this one does not turn into a 30 minute review that you're probably not gonna watch all the way through. But let's take a quick second and talk about why I ended up with the Konica Hexar RF over some other in-mount rangefinders. Now, my first in-mount camera was the Leica M6. The M6 is such an amazing camera. I instantly fell in love with it. I took my M6 everywhere with me and shot everything with it from my family to my personal work. But every fourth or fifth roll I would put into my M6 would end up not taking up in the film advance pool. The issue with this is that I would do the same thing for the previous four rolls of film, but for some reason on the fifth roll or sixth roll or fourth roll, I would mess up and I would walk around taking banger images to only realize that once I got to frame 36 or 37, that the film would advance to frame 38. I would then take another frame and it would advance to frame 39. And this my friends is one of the few ways of the M6 telling you that you did not install your roll of film correctly. And to be fair, after doing this about 20 times, I began to think that I was like mentally daft or something. I just could not get this right. I would then take my time to insert a roll of film and I would find myself making the exact same mistakes again. Now, on about the 21st mistake, I started to think that maybe the M6 wasn't for me. Maybe, just maybe, I could find another rangefinder that I could use the same excellent M-mount lenses that I already own but would it give me some of the creature comforts of digital or at least a more advanced film camera. I know, I know, before you stone or shoot me with an arrow, my goal as a creator is to create. I absolutely hated the fact that I kept falling into the same user error on my M6 and I began searching for something that was going to be slightly different. Maybe it was just gear acquisition syndrome. Maybe I was just frustrated, but in my search for a different in-mount camera, I landed on the Konica Hexar RF because of things I could not get right in my Leica M6. Now, I want to talk about three things that I love about this camera. And I want to talk about a couple of things that I'm not super crazy about, but I want to talk about the three things I love first. The first thing that I love about this camera is that it has a motorized film advance and rewind, making it convenient to load and unload film quickly. I know many who love Leica M cameras will say that an M mount camera with a motorized film advance and rewind is like sacrilegious, that it takes away from the purity of shooting an M mount camera. And I will look you in the face and say that is a bunch of crap. It really is. I want to tell you that I want you to hear this. I want to tell you and I want you to hear this loud and clear. Someone else's opinion on what camera you shoot is a meaningless exercise of futility. 
Opinions are just opinions. If you enjoy photographing with a camera, then enjoy it and do not, and I mean do not, let someone ruin your day by telling you you're doing something wrong or that your camera is lame or inferior of other things because it does not fall in line with what their thoughts are. The motorized film Advance and Rewind in the Hexar RF has helped me far more than it has hurt me. The peace of mind that has given me has been worth its weight in gold. Oh, and not to mention it's cheaper than an M6. The second reason why I love the Hexar RF is that Hexar RF incorporates several advanced features that enhance the overall shooting experience. It offers aperture priority, automatic exposure modes, allowing you to set your desired aperture on your lens while the camera adjusts the shutter speed accordingly to your aperture. I mean, yes, you have to think less, but when you're moving quickly, sometimes it's super nice to put, be able to put a camera up to your eye, get your framing correct, and to just shoot, and not have to make multiple decisions as you are kind of framing your image that you're trying to get. Having to make one decision is by far better than having to make three or four decisions. I like to think of Aperture Priority like Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, always wearing a black shirt. Steve famously will always wear the same thing every day so that he can make less decisions in the morning and to have more mental headspace to make harder decisions later in the day. Now, I think making complex decisions and shooting with cameras is meant to be fun. This gets out of the way and I find it fun and enjoyable. I mean, I can continue to tell you what I love about the Konica Hex RF, but I want to tell you I was only going to keep it to three things, so I want to be honest and keep it to three. The last thing for this video that I love is the build quality of the RF. The build quality of the Konica Hexar RF camera is truly exceptional. It's heavy, it's weighty, you can put a lens on it, a larger lens, and it feels comfortable. You can put a smaller lens on it and it feels comfortable. It's made out of metal and hard uh, plastic. Um, the buttons are tactile. Every dial, every button, and every control has, on the Hexar has a satisfying tactile feel, offering precise and smooth operation as you are kind of figuring it out with your hands. The camera weight and balance contribute to a comfortable grip, and it allows for even heavier lenses, like I said before, to be weighted evenly on the body. With this robust construction, the Hexar RF can actually be used as a weapon. I'm not saying that you use it as a weapon, but it could be if you needed to. The thing that I love about this is that the attention to detail and the build quality reflects Konica's commitment to producing a camera that not only delivers great results, but it also stands up to the tests of time. If you were to pick up the Hexar today, you would think that this camera was made within like the last 10 years and not a camera that was released in 1999, which is nuts. Um, but I want to take just a quick moment to talk to you about film cameras in 2023. And this kind of goes into one of the things that I don't like. There's no film camera that you can buy today that does not come with some sort of inherent risk. You may run out and buy this camera and you may be able to put 500 rolls through it before it breaks. Or you may only be able to put seven rolls in it before it breaks. A lot of companies of yesteryear have gone out of business and you may not be able to find someone who can repair your film camera. Now that should not be a reason why you should not buy one. It should be a reason why you make sure you get a good copy. The Konica is not necessarily a camera that should sit on a shelf. It is a camera that should be used somewhat frequently to ensure that the electronics don't seize up. If you are to buy one, I would probably ask to see a video of the camera in function. I would ask to see the battery compartment to ensure it is not corroded. I would also ask to hear the camera film advance to make sure that you're not hearing anything funky and that the film advances smoothly. 
I would also ask to hear the camera take a few photos, to hear the camera at a couple of different shutter speeds to make sure it sounds as if the shutter is releasing properly at the right shutter speeds. It is pretty critical that you do that. The last thing I want to say in this video is that film photography will have <laughs> shooting film. You will have bad times. You will have film that will be drastically underexposed. You will shoot film that will not be stored properly. You will have film cameras that will break and cameras that you will break. But through all of this film photography will always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to in your life. Every unexposed or underexposed photograph, every camera that breaks, every role that you pay to get developed that looks like crap will teach you something about yourself. Shooting film will humble you as a photographer. And on the other end, when you get back those few roles where everything works out perfectly, or when you get film scans that look so buttery good, that looks so great that you end up wondering why you did not start shooting film earlier, will all be worth it. The good and the bad, the bad and the good will all be worth it. This is another video on film photography. And uh, if you like this video, please smash that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Wait, who actually smashes subscribe buttons when someone tells them? Well, if you find it worth it, subscribe to the channel. If not, that's okay too. Peace.